Hello everyone and welcome to It's Your Call. I'm your host Kai and today I am joined by the absolutely amazing Tracy. Tracy is a amazing bridge player. She's been very, very involved in the community. She is working extremely, extremely hard on getting bridge out to the masses. Let's first talk about some of her bridge achievements. She came third in the 2023 USBC, uh, which is the United States Bridge Championship on Team Dinkin. Do you have any story there? I mean, God, the whole thing was a huge story. Sam Dinkin was our sponsor. He was playing with a child prodigy, Olivia Shearson. I had the privilege of playing with Billy Cohen, who is an amazing player. So the championships, you compete for two full days. So it is a grueling event. So I was not playing my best when we first started, and I was kind of feeling a little bad about that. And we barely squeaked out of the round robin. We're coming down this bracket, and it comes all the way down to our last match on the second day, and we barely squeak through, and we make it past that team, and now we're going to play one of the teams that drops down from bracket one. We got Team Lewis, which was the former USA One team. I contacted my director at my company, and I said, oh my god, good news, bad news. I have to reschedule a couple of meetings this week. Amazing news is we're competing right now against the former USA One team, and we're actually in contention. Yeah, my director told me that she wasn't going to approve my second week there. What? Yeah. Lame. Can you imagine you have been asked to play in the U.S. trials. You are now on a team that is gaining momentum. We are getting stronger and stronger. As remember, we were one of the less experienced teams in the field. Mm -hmm. So there's some nerves to get over. I mean, that's so much about competing, right? So I get this email, and I look at this email, I close the email down, and I went and did a 40-minute meditation. I tried to clear all of that out and put all of my energy in. I go downstairs. I didn't say anything to my team on that Monday. I did my personal issues and my personal problems to interfere with anybody. So I went downstairs, we competed, we ended up beating the Lewis team. And then we went and played the next team. And after our first round against them, we were up by like 50 points on that team. And uh, we ended up moving on and then we took on Team Rosenthal. And we ended up deciding that we we're gonna play all eight matches. It was a great experience for us. We ended up winning three of the sets of the eight, so we'll take that. And for reference, didn't that team go on to win the- yeah, they won the gold medal in the world. Yeah, they won the world championships in Morocco last year, and it was super cute. Yeah. So it was an amazing, amazing experience. I just left my corporate job a week ago, and for the last six months, I've been building out a software company to do marketing for the high-end optical world. And a couple of months ago, I decided to also build out marketing solutions for the bridge world. So I have that that is just starting to get going. I think after this auction in the last four years, I'll probably have raised about a half a million dollars for bridge projects. I did want to have a good overall explanation of how the Spark auction works. I got the most amazing uh, quote from John McLaughlin, and he said it was his favorite thing on the ACBL calendar. Well, there's four ways to get involved, right? Mm. Do a straight donation to the American Education mm. Foundation. And if you're going to just do a straight donation, you can do that directly with the foundation. And when you click, you can click for the Spark Fund. And that's the thing. A Spark Fund is funding programs between 17 to 31 year olds. It has really been helping prop up the college programs, mm -hmm. which allows more of the college kids to be exposed to Bridge, to maybe come to an NABC. We're helping fund a junior night at the NABCs. Me going to Uganda for this FISU Mind Sport Championship. It's all of these things. Again, the transnationals that's happening in Poland this year, it's that money's going to be helping to fund that. 
And it's the thing is the more money we have, the more we can start to think outside the, the box. box and what we can do. As you can get involved, I, I can't say enough. Try to try to play on July 15th. Um, you can play with your own partner. You can try to win one of the pros. If you get outbid and don't win one of the pros on the close of the auction, the auction started June 1st. It's going to go all the way to July 7th. Please reach out to me. I have pros in my back pocket. You can also get a ticket and play with your own friend even after this auction closes. I will keep taking entries all the way up until July 15th. We want as many people to be involved on July 15th, 7 p.m. at night on Real Bridge. Real Bridge has video and voice just like this. You're going to see your partner, but you're going to also see your opponents. You're going to be able to talk with them. So if you don't have a lot of money to give, but you want to be a part of this, and I wanted to make this so everybody could be a part of, we have kibitzing. It's only $10 to be a part of. We have Barry Regal, Bronia Jenkins are in a webinar that will be broadcasting live the event. They're up in like the skybox. They can see all of us at the table. You can speak with Barry and Bronia. You can ask them to ask us questions from the table. Mm -hmm. On top of that, there's a lot of professional players that want to give back that can't be involved on the July 15th event. They'll let me auction off games with them. You can play with Pi in a future ACBL game on any bridge platform that you want to do. These are all online games, so it's comfort of your own home. You're going to be able to play. You can, you know, you can bid on people like Gavin Wolpert, Jenny Wolpert, Robert Todd, Mike Berkowitz, Larry Cohen. There's 120 something professionals that have given of themselves and are letting me, as I jokingly say, pimp them out. <laughs> I get a little overwhelmed that so many people give up themselves. No, it's, it's so sweet of everyone. Everyone is so kind, and it just goes to show how generous the Bridge community really is and how much we really want to get this out there. We want to show our love of the game and get more people in, so I think... What you're doing here is a huge, huge facilitator for it in, in more ways than one. It builds community and it gets people to donate, to bring more money to the cause, to allow us to be more creative and get Bridge out there in as many ways as we possibly can. So absolutely amazing. Everything that you're doing, Tracy, hearing your story is honestly, it's inspirational because of just all of the stuff that you're doing and how passionate you are for it and when you're talking about it you're extremely excited and it makes you so happy and it just brings such a smile to my face and i want to be a part of that as well so thank you for all that you are doing i have a bridge problem for you let's talk bridge all right so bridgie bridgie here we go So, this is your hand. We are uh, playing match point. You, East is the dealer and you are South. Okay? Auction starts with a one club opener from East and it is your call. How would you start this off? Oh, easily one no trump. Boom. Done. We're going to get a one no trump in here. Who cares about our minor suits? We can't even bid two clubs naturally. We're going to get a two hearts bid from West. And is that natural? It is going to be natural. We're keeping it simple. And your partner, they're going to bid two spades. And then we're going to have East, they're going to pass. So what are your thoughts here? Two hearts is natural. What do you play in this situation as North? So. I play two spades here, so I usually play Liebensahl. So the way I play this with most of my regular partners is two spades is going to show at least five or more spades, but no interest in game. And if we look at this hand, right, guys? Mm -hmm. you, I've got an opener over here, which my values are over. That's good for our side. Yep. Wes did make a call. Yes. If I was in a really good competition, I'd probably be sizing up who was West. And I know a lot of people that might be making hardly any call. 
they got 13 cards in their hand and they might be making a call just to be disrupted. Right. They did make a call. They made a call in our weaker suit, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then my partner has bid, but they don't have to have a lot of values, but they at least have five or more spades. King Little is a good holding for my partner's spades. I'm passing. All right, great. I mean, and the thing is, is that where else are we going to go? Partners told us that spades is where it's at. They don't have many points here, else they would be doing something else. Inviting in spades, bidding three spades by game forcing with spades. Those are the further descriptions of how Lebensthal would work. And yeah, there's nothing more to say. And it's going to go pass, pass, pass. And you end up in two spades, which is uh, much better than how I actually handled this. So on this hand, it went one club from east. And I'm south. And I'm looking at my hand and I'm like, okay. First off, my main problem here is I think I miscounted the high carb points. I think I, I, I thought I had 14, so I didn't have en- enough for bidding one no trump. But the other thing is, is something psyched me out about not bidding one no trump here, which was that I didn't have anything that partner could want because bidding one no trump, it's very, very major centric. Partner is either going to be looking for a four card major or they're going to be transferring you. And I'm thinking, well, my hand doesn't really warrant either of those things. Partner transferring me and dropping me isn't a horrible thing, but maybe we might be better off if I can get across my club suit and we can better describe things and end up in, well, I guess we would end up in a no trump here. So maybe my thoughts were very, very short-sighted. But what I did is I was like, pass. I said pass, which gets you into a little bit of a pickle when the auction continues was one heart they bid one spade and then it went one no trump that's that's what happens here if i bid two clubs here now i would be showing support for partner or would you play it or would you play that differently in this situation do you think two clubs should be natural well i mean you didn't take an action after one club so no i would say here that two hearts probably would be more supportive of one spade because you passed over the one club right these are partnership agreements yes you can see by not taking a direct action you got yourself in trouble i did and at the table kai if east hadn't opened what would you open that south hand i would have decided to I would have opened one no trump with this hand. Eight of your high card points are in clubs. Maybe you should open one no trump right over east. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and that's the thing is by passing, yeah, you got yourself into a bit of a pickle. Yeah, so at this point, you're kind of like, I don't want to bid anything. Double would be penalty. Yeah, it looks penalty to me. I was thinking support double, but that doesn't that doesn't track whatsoever. So double it should probably be penalty here because like what are you doing showing four diamonds like what's the point in that and even it being penalty and not having a bid here could imply having four diamonds or some some manner like that could bid two clubs that's an option if you don't if you're playing two hearts as the cue bid showing support of spades but if you're passing initially i don't know it's a very awkward situation yeah and this is going to come down to partnership agreements here. Certainly. And this is where people that have been playing for a long period of time together and start to develop extensive notes, they're going to know in this kind of competitive situation what are all these different bids mean. Right. Is two club support for spades, but only three card support? Is two hearts going to be four card support? Is yeah. double penalty or is it something else? Right. Is it, hey, I had clubs over here, and it was a penalty. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, So, in the end here, I decided to do the double, because I'm like, logically, I'm like, this feels like a penalty double, and it feels like it's a misfit for the opponents, and it feels like it's one of these hands where whoever ends up with the contract is going to be unhappy. Because we all love those situations where we end up in a contract and then the opponents are just happy to not be playing as declared. So I'm like, I think I might have caught 
them in a misfit because we just have a misfitty hand. So at this point, it went pass, pass, and then they tried to run. They eventually ended up, I think they offered two diamonds and whacked. And then I went and, and then I whacked. And then it, they ran to two hearts and then it went whack. And then it went pass, pass, pass. So they ended up in the two hearts here, doubled. Partner leads clubs. Where, which they did. We, we love partner for that. Um, it's golden. We, it, it went down two on the hand. So okay. it was this, this mistake of not bidding one no Trump initially actually ten, ended up being a big positive because the opponents got overzealous and kept going. Well, and that's the thing, is that's the fun part of bridge, right? Like, it's not... But did you describe your hand the best to your partner? No, right? we did not. Yeah, and that's the thing, is in other situations, you guys might have missed out on a game. Yeah, certainly. I, I don't... I think that we could have definitely missed out on a game. Our club suit is gorgeous. Um the the king and one spade is good as well so you know it's and partner actually here what partner has is they have the queen 10 fifth of spades king jack 10 fourth of hearts small doubleton diamond small doubleton club and you make three no trump on the sand not on a diamond lead but um... three no trump is very very difficult because you don't have many entries in hearts and the spades you really can't get them going um everything splits kind of poorly so it's uncomfortable yeah you're not making it it doesn't look good and I you played this hand out so it went down we, two. we did um yes it was down two so plus 300 is how it was in the end it was a very, very fun hand, but it certainly could have been bid more accurately by myself. But yeah, I was curious just because I, I really did like this hand because I hadn't felt so stumped ever before, like in both situations here where for, for some reason here as South in Seriously, this spot, never been that stumped? I, I had never been this stumped before. And maybe it was the mindset that I was in during or I was feeling very, very uncreative. This was this was a moment where I passed because I felt stumped here, and then I felt stumped until I found that the double was penalty, because I wasn't really considering it in my calculations before. I'm like, I gotta show my hand here somehow because I have values. I was never on the mindset of being, after it goes one heart, one spade, one no trump. At this point right here, I was never considering that defense might be where we want to be until I opened a little flap in my mind that was saying, oh, wait a second, this could be good for us if we're defending. Every bridge hand's different. Yes. Every bridge hand, there's, it's gray. Mm -hmm. Bridge is not black and white. No, no, very, very gray. There's never, absolutely, this was clearly the right way to go. And get creative with it with this hand because it definitely described my hand it got my values off my chest i had the clubs over the one club bitter it it explained my hand but you got a better result by passing and a little bit of luck right. was it the right thing to do could there, is there many boards and layouts where you might have lost the option and yeah this one happened to be better the way you bid it score wise you did better in the long term and that's the other thing is eventually you start to learn what's going to be better in the long oh. term you go whoops you know i did the right thing it didn't work out well for me right now but that was still the right bit and i'm yeah. gonna make that bit the next time i didn't realize that there was different agreements in this specific situation in which two clubs could be a limit race for partner but one heart could also be used for it as such I've always just defaulted for their first bid suit as the Q bid because that's generally what we're taught, at least. See, if there's two bids, so it depends on what partnership agreements you have. Correct. A lot of people, when the opponents have bid two suits, and 
and it usually will come in when your partner's bid is spade and the opponent's bid two suit. So let's say it had gone club. The club's good. Club. club the pass, a heart, a spade, and this person now passes, and I didn't bid the no trump, right? Right. I have two few bids available. Right. You have two options here. Yeah. So two spades is. I've got 13 cards and a couple of spades with your partner, and we don't want this person coming into the auction yet. Right. Um, two clubs here can easily be three card support. Three clubs is four card support with mixed values. Okay, mixed raise. Yep. And now you have two hearts to show a four card. Yeah, so you could specify between the four card limit. Card and the four cards. So mm -hmm. now the opponents bid at the three level, your partner has some extra information. Right. Big, big information. Do we have a nine card fit or do we have an eight card fit? Could be a huge, huge difference. So very, very interesting spot. Thank you for all of your insights and thank you for all you do on the bridge world. Thank you for joining me on It's Your Call. One last reminder to everyone, please go to the link in the description and please become a part of the Spark ACBL EF auction. It's a huge event. It's a big party. Lots of people are working on this event. Lots of people have donated their time. So please join it. It's a lot of fun. And it all it does is it helps you bridge and you get to have a good time while doing it. So thank you for everything. Um, I hope that we can make bridge a, a big game again. You can do your part by every time you see bridge content, liking, share, comment on it. Mm -hmm. and actually save, just click the save button. YouTube channels out there, go subscribe to them. Yeah. And everybody else, start making content. Start making us visible. Um, do some posts that you're at a bridge tournament. Show that it's fun. I won. I did well. I got points. Let's go. It's been a pleasure talking with you, Tracy. I'm going to see you sometime soon in the future. Good luck with all of your bridge marketing. Um, let's get this game going. Awesome. Thank you, Kai. Thanks for everything you're doing. All right. We'll see ya. All right, everyone. What did you think of that problem? Were you as stumped as I was, or were you immediately thinking one no trump like Tracy was? I, I'm not sure what was going through my head, but one no trump seemed fairly clear, especially when you have 15 points. It's hard when you count your hand as 14 high card points. But it also led to a different situation. Do you play Lebensol there? Would you take two spades as weak in the line that Tracy went through? Furthermore, what would you do if you had passed what do you take two clubs as there? Do you play it as natural or do you play it as a limit raise? Uh, similarly with two hearts, is it just a four card limit raise? Let us know what you would do in all these situations. Do you think that double is immediately penalty over the one no trump? Or do you have some other special meaning for it? Let us know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget, if you are interested in the Spark Auction, it is a very, very fun event. Please do go donate. It really helps get Youth Bridge out there. It helps me go to all these amazing events that I otherwise would not financially be able to do. I think that ends this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did like the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Just like Tracy said, so that this video will be liked by the algorithm and Bridge can spread. We can get more people into the game. That's the goal overall. So thank you for being a part of this video. And I hope that y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. We will see y'all next week. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.